Creatine is one of the most popular supplements for building muscle and increasing athletic performance. Research shows that 45 to 75% of athletes like powerlifters, boxers, and weightlifters use creatine. So what actually happens to your body when you take creatine? Is it safe long term and what kind of effects can you expect both the good and the bad? Well today we're going to take a journey inside of your body to see exactly what happens after creatine is consumed. And first you should know that less than 200 years ago we didn't even know what would happen because it wasn't until 1832 that it was discovered by French scientists that successfully extracted it from beef. It was only then that we started to learn that this molecule is very common and it gets produced by mammals from the amino acids glycine, methionine, and arginine. Specifically, your body primarily produces creatine out of these amino acids in the liver, although it's also synthesized to a lesser extent in the kidneys and pancreas. Research shows that a 70 kilogram or 155 pound man with an average physique naturally has about 120 grams of creatine stored in his body without any supplementation. About 90 to 95 percent of this creatine is located within his muscle cells, where the creatine can quickly be used to provide benefits for energy production and athletic performance. The other 5 to 10 percent of creatine can be found all over the body in other cells and tissues, including the brain. While your body creates about 1 to 2 grams of creatine per day on its own, you can also get more creatine from food or supplements. Especially red meat and fish score high in creatine because, like I said, 90 to 95% of creatine is found in human muscle, and this is also true for animal muscle. One pound of beef or salmon provides about 1 to 2 grams of creatine, and it's estimated that on average most people get about half of their daily creatine intake from animal meats. Since vegetarians and vegans don't eat meat, they often have lower levels of creatine in their bodies. This is because even though your body does create about 1 to 2 grams of creatine per day, on average, your body also releases about 2 grams of creatine per day in the form of creatinine. So, if you don't eat meat products and you don't supplement with creatine, you're unlikely to become deficient, but you can end up with lower levels of creatine in your muscles and circulatory system, and that will have a negative effect on your athletic performance. On the other hand, if you take in a surplus of creatine through supplementation or through food, the most significant impact that it'll have after entering your body will be enhanced energy production. You see, muscle contractions require energy, which comes from the breakdown of adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. The amount of ATP found within a muscle is generally so low that it's only enough to generate energy for a fraction of a second. After it generates that energy, it breaks down into ADP, which can't be used for energy. At this point, your body will use a phosphate molecule to recycle this byproduct, ADP, back into ATP so it can be used for energy once again. And that's exactly where creatine comes into play. Most people don't know that creatine is actually turned into creatine phosphate inside your body. Creatine phosphate serves as the phosphate donor for the replenishment of ATP. In other words, creatine provides a buffer against muscle fatigue by assisting with the energy production process. So the step-by-step -step is like this. First, the creatine is ingested either through food or in a supplement form. The creatine is then converted into creatine phosphate and this leads to more creatine phosphate being stored in your muscle tissue. That extra phosphate becomes available for ATP recycling and ultimately leads to muscles being able to produce more energy for longer with less fatigue. It's thanks to this mechanism that creatine is so highly effective at increasing athletic performance and power output. In fact, in a large meta-analysis that included 22 studies on creatine, researchers found that it was able to significantly increase lifting performance. The results showed that the average increase in weightlifting performance was 14% higher in the creatine group than in the placebo group. Other studies on creatine supplementation in relation to athletic performance also demonstrated very impressive results with short-term creatine supplementation leading to improved maximal power, strength, muscle contractions, and sprinting performance. Some of these stats increased by 5 to 15 percent, which may not sound like a lot, but top-level athletes go through extremely difficult workouts for years to get just a little bit better. So a 5 to 15 percent boost from short-term creatine supplementation is actually huge. And you can expect that kind of boost in exercise performance for yourself relatively quickly, especially if you use a loading phase to fill your muscle creatine stores faster. 
And as those creatine stores fill, not only does the level of creatine phosphate increase, but you also tend to retain more water. This is because when creatine is taken into a muscle cell, it also draws water into that cell. The exact mechanism for how this works isn't fully clear yet, but it definitely leads to an increase in water retention within your muscle cells. This is why your body weight is very likely to go up when you take creatine. Your muscles retain more water, which is why you can expect to weigh anywhere from one and a half to three and a half pounds more after a week of creatine loading. While water retention might sound like a bad thing, it's actually beneficial when water is retained within your muscles because it gives your muscles a fuller look, making you appear more muscular. It also actually assists with muscle growth because improved muscle cellular hydration increases the pressure placed against the cell membranes and cytoskeletons found within muscle cells. So your muscle cells perceive this as a threat to their integrity, which can increase anabolic signaling, leading to a more favorable protein turnover rate. Since the prerequisite to muscle growth is a positive protein turnover rate, which is simply when the rate of protein synthesis exceeds the rate of protein breakdown in the body, it becomes clear that increased cellular hydration, or in other words, increased water retention, may be one of the ways that creatine supplementation helps to stimulate muscle growth. Research shows that supplementing with creatine can benefit the muscle cross-section area for a variety of different people, including recreational and elite athletes, sedentary individuals, and even the elderly. And the effects on gaining muscle mass are significant. For example, a six week long strength training study found that men that supplemented with creatine gained on average two more kilograms of muscle than the men that received a placebo. Even though it's difficult to say for sure that this extra muscle growth was directly due to increased cellular hydration, we can say for sure that creatine can definitely help you build more muscle mass. But the effects of taking more creatine into your body don't just stop there. For example, most people have no idea that creatine benefits cognitive function. Most people would associate creatine with unintelligent meatheads, but creatine can actually benefit your brain. Just like your muscles, your brain stores phosphocreatine and requires plenty of ATP for optimal function. For example, scientists from the University of Sydney assessed the effects of creatine on cognitive performance, and they concluded that creatine supplementation gave a significant, measurable boost to brain power. One of the things that the study measured was the effect of creatine supplementation on the ability of participants to remember a sequence of numbers. And the ability to remember long numbers improved from a number length of approximately seven digits to an average of eight and a half digits, which is actually a 20% increase. One downside to this study that I have to mention is that the participants were vegetarian. So supplementing with creatine could have had a bigger impact on them than people that eat meat and get more creatine from their diet regularly. With that said, it is still clear that creatine is very important for optimal brain function because people that have a rare genetic condition that prevents them from producing their own creatine naturally, they have severe cognitive issues including mental disabilities like autism. Now, aside from the benefits, once you take a surplus of creatine into your body, there are some negative effects as well. And even though most people won't experience side effects on creatine, they can happen. So we should talk about them. First, one of the most common worries for people that are deciding whether to supplement with creatine or not is hair loss. This fear mostly comes from a study that found that three weeks of creatine supplementation increased levels of dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, which is the primary androgen that's associated with male pattern baldness. But is this really something that you have to worry about? Well, based on the current evidence, even though creatine by itself is unlikely to lead to hair loss alone, it can't be ruled out without further studies. That's because there are no direct studies available as to whether creatine causes hair loss or not. And there's also not much other data on whether creatine increases DHT other than that one study. What we do know is that DHT is created from the conversion of testosterone. And if creatine increases testosterone, that could lead to more testosterone being converted into DHT. So it does make sense for future studies to check if creatine does in fact increase levels of DHT. But many studies have tested creatine's effects on testosterone, and only a small handful of them found a significant increase when 20 grams of creatine was being taken per day over the course of a week. 
However, the majority of the studies found no effect of creatine on testosterone. So given that most data indicates creatine does not increase testosterone, it's unlikely that creatine alone will cause hair loss. But more studies can change that theory, so if you are worried about hair loss and it runs in your family, it might be something to keep in mind. Aside from hair loss, the most commonly reported side effect inside of the body after taking creatine is pretty much limited to digestion in the form of cramping, nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Usually these digestive issues will happen during a loading phase where you're taking in up to 25 grams of creatine per day to fill your muscle creatine stores faster. But remember, if you have digestive issues, you don't have to do that. You could fill your muscle creatine stores by taking five grams of creatine for about four weeks, and once they're full, they can't get any fuller. So even if you do a loading phase where you're taking in high amounts of creatine for seven days, there's no reason to continue doing it past those seven days. There also have been reports of people becoming dehydrated while taking creatine. Since creatine pulls water into muscle cells, it's no surprise that this can happen. If someone starts supplementing with creatine and they don't drink enough water, dehydration can definitely happen. So it's essential to drink enough water while supplementing with creatine, especially if you do decide to do a loading phase, which again, the only benefit of a loading phase is that it'll increase strength, power and body weight faster if you're an athlete that needs that physiological boost right away. Finally, the last lingering effect is that you'll obviously have more creatine stored inside your body. And even after you stop taking creatine, once your muscle creatine stores are saturated, it generally takes about four to six weeks after getting off of creatine for your creatine stores to return back to normal baseline levels. So that should give you a very good idea of what happens inside your body when you take creatine. If you wanna get more into the details and learn how to actually take creatine for optimal muscle growth and improve performance, I'll link up a video in the description and at the end of this video as well. That video will help you figure out how much creatine to take, when you should take it, and it'll answer all the questions you have about how to supplement with creatine. Also, I've said this once and I'll say it over and over again. Even though creatine is like a silver bullet in the world of natural muscle building supplements, it's not gonna replace consistently doing the right thing with your diet and workout plan. So if you want any extra help with your diet or workout plan, I have everything from courses to recipe books to one-on-one -on -one coaching. All you have to do is click the link in the description below, or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. See you guys soon. Pumping.